Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at electrical current. So let's get started. The first thing it says here is that in an electrical circuit, negative charges, i.e. the electrons, pass through a conductor, which is the wire. So in order to have a flow of charges or a flow of electrons in a circuit, we need to have wires, usually made of copper. It then says electrons flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery. So if we have a look at this picture of a simple circuit diagram, you'll see we have a battery which is actually known as a cell because there's only one of them, and we then have some wires connected to a bulb. And you'll notice the electrons travel from the negative terminal of the battery round here down through the bulb and back up to the positive terminal of the battery. And the reason for this is to do with the charge on the electrons. So remember electrons have a negative charge and therefore they will be repelled away from the negative terminal of the battery but they will also be attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery. So we've said that in order to have a working circuit, we need to have conducting wires. So it says here that conductors allow current to flow through them, for example, metals and graphite, but insulators do not allow a current to flow, for example, plastic, rubber, or wood. So we need to have wires that are conductors if we want current to flow. And why do we need a power supply or a battery in a circuit in the first place? Well, it says here that a power supply, for example, a battery, provides the charges with energy to to move around the circuit. So if it wasn't for the battery, the electrons wouldn't actually go anywhere. And just to show you a simulation of this, you'll notice in this simple circuit we have a battery, there's the positive terminal, there's the negative terminal, so electrons should come out of the left hand side and travel through this bulb and then through this second bulb. So if we have a look at what the electrons are doing, the battery, remember, is going to provide energy to these electrons or the charges and therefore they will move in the circuit like this. And the first thing I want to point out if we pause it is that the electrons passing through the battery there, you'll notice the dial on the electrons showing the energy shows that the energy as they pass through here is actually increasing. So it's moving around to the right, which is showing that the energy is increasing as the electrons pass through the battery. But as they leave the battery, you'll notice that the energy stays the same. It doesn't change until they get to a component in the circuit such as a bulb and any component in the circuit is going to use up energy from the battery. So if you have a look at this first bulb, you'll notice that the dial representing energy of the electrons decreases over here, and then you'll notice it stays the same again in the wire, and then as you get to the second component, the energy decreases again, and that's because the second component is using up energy again. And notice how the energy stays the same until it gets back to the power supply where it increases again. So that is what happens to the energy of the electrons in the circuit. Going back to the notes now, a common misconception is that batteries themselves produce electrons, so they spit out electrons which are going to flow in our circuit. But that is definitely not the case because remember we've talked about the fact that atoms have electrons in them and therefore it's these electrons that are going to be flowing in our wires. So because wires are made up of atoms, within those atoms it will be the electrons that can be made to move but they need to be given enough energy to do so from the battery. So it says here, the charges, i.e. the electrons, already exist in the wire. They're not produced by the battery. So they're there to begin with, but they're given a kick to move when the battery is connected in the circuit. So just to show you a simulation of this, if you look here, we've got a cross section of a wire. So this is like the inside of a wire. So if the black dots represent nuclei of atoms, and if the red dots represent electrons orbiting around the nuclei of atoms, you notice that the electrons are not actually moving along Long in the wire, they're just moving around the nuclei. So in a sense, we can say the electrons move at random and there's no overall motion. But if we connect a power supply to it like this, with a negative terminal on the left and a positive terminal on the right, then you'll notice that there is a drift of the electrons away from the negative electrode and towards the positive electrode. And that's because, remember, electrons are negatively charged, so they'll be repelled away from the negative plate on the left and attracted towards the positive plate on the right. And so this is how the electrons are going to move when you connect a battery into a circuit. It's not the case that they are produced by the battery. Going back to the notes now, if we want to measure current in a circuit, we need to use a device called an ammeter. And here's the circuit symbol for an ammeter. So it's basically just a big circle with a capital A in it. Next, we have the definition of electrical current. So it says here that electrical current is the electric charge transferred per unit time. And we can represent this in symbol form using I for current, Q for charge, and T for time. So because we're saying electrical current is the electric charge transferred per unit time, remember this word per means divided by in physics. So this is the same as saying current I equals charge Q divided by the time T. Or in other words, we can say the quantity of charges which pass a point can be found knowing the current and the time it flows for. 
So if we rearrange this equation, we get Q equals IT, which is the equation that you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam. And we've already said what these symbols mean, but we've got our units here as well. So it says Q is electric charge measured in coulombs with a capital C. I is the electrical current measured in amperes or amps for short with a capital A and T is time measured in seconds as always. Lastly, it says here that one ampere or one amp equals one coulomb per second. And this is a common multiple choice question to be asked what is one amp or one ampere equivalent to? And you need to know that it's one coulomb per second. But how do you know that? Well, you need to use the equation to work that out. So we basically just look at the units of the equation. So if we look at this equation, I equals Q over T and consider the units, I is measured in amps or amperes. So we've got one ampere equals Q is measured in coulombs, so that's one coulomb divided by T is measured in seconds, so it's one coulomb per second. So one amp equals one coulomb per second, and it's worth remembering that. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.